Well, we've had some experience now looking at the ridge characteristics of fingerprints and their minutiae patterns. So we've looked at enclosures, we've looked for bifurcations, we've looked for all of these things, but how are we ever going to see all of this stuff if we don't know how to collect and develop the fingerprint impressions? So this section today um, of our notes is all about how to develop those prints and um, take a look at them. So there are three ways that you can actually leave behind a print. Um, there is what's called an invisible or latent print. Now this is one of the things on the front of your packet, one of your vocabulary terms. There's also what's called a visible or patent print. Now there's a difference between these two. Invisible, you can't see it, right? This is latent because it leaves behind the sweat and oils on a surface. You're going to have to do something to that latent print in order to be able to see the fingerprint. The visible, or what we call patent prints, is when somebody accidentally touches a colored liquid and then leaves the fingerprint behind on a surface so that you can see it. So in the video that we watched, we saw where the guy had actually left fingerprints in the victim's blood on the wall um, when he was attacking him with the ski pole. Um, then there's what's called a plastic print, and that's touching a soft surface that would actually mold to your ridge characteristics, almost like Silly Putty um, or Play-Doh, something like that. The latent prints are made up of the oils that are picked up from the areas that contain hair on the body. Um, it's also made up of amino acids, also from areas that contain hair, salt from your sweat, and water from your sweat. So what we can do latent prints in order to find them at a crime scene is weaken things that are involved in your fingerprints or that, that leave behind the fingerprint. Now, my screen's not changing. There it is. Whew, scared me for a second there. So when we visualize latent prints, there's lots of different ways to do it. First, the most common is using the fingerprint powder and a brush. And you may have heard them in the video talk about an ostrich hair brush. They also use horsehair brushes. Um, the kind of brushes that they use for painting, though, are usually too stiff. You want it to be real um, twirly and swingy, um, the hairs on it. So that way it's very, very gentle and it doesn't actually ruin the fingerprint. Now, there's also what's called a magnetic brush. Um, as well as magnetic powder. So it's a little wand that's a magnet that you can um, collect and release the shavings um, using a little button or switch on the handle. Then we can also chemically develop the print. So we're going to learn some different methods um, that will enable us to do that. So first let's take a look and again slow and changing here. First let's take a look at the chemical development of prints. So you heard in the video about ninhydrin. Um, ninhydrin is what reacts with the amino acids to produce a purple stain in the shape of the print. Um, sometimes it's, it, it, it works really, really well on paper, um, but it doesn't necessarily stay there long term, so sometimes you have to take a picture of it. Um, they talked about iodine fuming in the, in the video that we watched, and that's believed to react with the oils in your print and it forms kind of a brownish yellow stain in the shape of the print, kind of just like the ninhydrin does. Silver nitrate will react with the salts forming silver chloride and that will produce a brownish gray stain in the shape of the print. So we can also use what's called gentian violet and we use the gentian violet powder on um, sticky side of tape. So that stains the skin cells that are left in the shape of the print. Um, so if you're working with a surface that's really sticky, um, you can use the gentian violet powder instead of one of those previous liquids. Now, super glue, um, the traditional or the chemical name for super glue is cyanoacrylate ester. Um, and that's the term that I'm going to be using in class with you. Um, it's also referred to as superglue fuming um, or cyanoacrylate fuming um, in a forensic laboratory. So in the, you, what they do is they get it to convert into a gaseous form instead of the liquid. The gaseous form will attach itself to any water molecules present, any vapor molecules, and then as those vapor molecules condense, the superglue goes with them 
and then it will adhere to the surface of whatever it is that you're trying to lift the print from and it will give you something that then you can dust and lift like we are going to normally learn how to lift. So there are some um, basic frequently asked questions. How are latent fingerprints collected? So you've got this table. Now what I want you to do is I want you to focus in your notes when you're studying on the different uses and applications of these things that I just talked about. So looking at the uses for an anhydrin, you're going to use paper. Um, the object can be dipped or sprayed with an anhydrin um, and then you have to leave it sit for like 24 hours sometimes before that purple bluish print actually shows up. Um, Look at what cyanoacrylate vapor is used on, okay? It can be used on plastic, metal, glass, um, even on the surface of skin if needed. Um, silver nitrate is really, really good for wood and styrofoam, believe it or not. You can lift prints off of styrofoam. And then the iodine fuming is good for paper, cardboard, and other kind of unpainted surfaces. So make sure that you pay attention to that when you're studying. Now. The collection of the prints itself, um, it, whether you're dusting, whether you're using one of the chemical developments, it doesn't matter. The dusted prints get lifted um, with the same clear tape that we used when we lifted for trace evidence. We place it onto that piece of cardstock or the white spot paper. It has to be labeled with a minimum of the collector's name, date, time of lift, and the location of the lift. It's very specific location of the lift. Okay, can't just write crime scene or table. Well, which table? What part of the table? Um, Etc. So the chemically developed prints should be photographed in case they disintegrate. So that's really, really important um, if you actually go into forensic science. Um, we aren't going to have to photograph ours um, because the, for what we're using, we, if it disappears, it disappears. Um, we're just trying to see if we can get it to show up. So for the remainder, um, of the lab time for this unit is going to be working on attempting each of these different techniques and um, at the end you're going to have the opportunity to create um, a portfolio of best lifts using different techniques so it'll be fun I hope you enjoy it oh and by the way I would wear clothing that is dark <laughs> don't wear anything that's light colored fingerprint powder tends to get everywhere <laughs>